Welcome to today's 3D print. We have a new printer today. This was not sent to me by anybody. Well, it was sent to me by Amazon, but I paid for it. Um, I was browsing around Amazon. I had a little bit of rewards points left from my Amazon Visa card. I use that for work, so I get a bunch of rewards points that I use to buy stuff. So I don't have to you know, spend my paycheck money. <laughs> um, but... I was browsing and I saw this and I was like, that's actually a pretty nice looking printer. I want to try that. It was like $220. It's from PX Malian. It's called the Core i3. So it's got extrusions and um, acrylic and steel. And I was like, that's an interesting looking printer. 220 by 220 by 220. So we're going to play with it. And we're going to build this today. I believe this is a kit. So I'm not sure how long it's going to take to build this. So we're going to find out. I figured, let's try a kit, let's see if I can get through that, because it might take me a couple days to build it, you know, available time and whatnot, so let's get started. She came in a rather nice clamshell box, and then it's got this big foam block inside, which I'm assuming contains all the goodies. So we are going to tear into it. Yep, actually this does look somewhat assembled. The the memory block unit is assembled here, and so this might not be too bad. So hang on while I disassemble all this. Well, it's definitely a kit. So here we are in the top, and this is a user manual. Although I am guessing this is not going to contain very much. It's too small. Yeah, it's not really a user manual. This is just description. So there's probably something on the SD card. Now that is acrylic. 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 And these are aluminum extrusions. I've never seen a mix of acrylic, ABS molded, and aluminum all in one kit. Looks like T-rails? No, they are V-rails, actually. So this is going to be interesting. I don't know if these are paired together, so I'm going to keep them together. If they come... Actually, I can leave them all in here. These are actually sheets that I can separate. Look at that. Okay. So that's all the aluminum extrusions and acrylic rails and whatnot. Oh, yeah. It's a kit. Oh, this is going to be fun. So here we have... All the smooth rods, limit switches, fans, uh, heater cartridge, they are all plugged. Um, different bits and pieces, linear guides, hot end, nozzle. Oh, I love how small that is. Wow, that is a tiny hot end. That is a very tiny hot end. Would you look at that? I don't think I've ever seen one that small. Oh, that's weird. Does that go sideways? No, that can't be the hot end. Huh. Well, isn't that weird? I think that's the, the cooling block. And that's the hot end. I think this somehow goes in here. Yeah, okay. Well, isn't that interesting? And there's a grub screw to hold it in there. Hmm. You know, this would make a pretty cool, and these line up, this would make a pretty cool dual extruder setup because you could put them right next to each other. So the, the heads would be very, very close together. Or turn it this way and you'd have a small gap between them, but still the same distance. That's kind of cool. So we'll put that back. So all the wiring to connect everything makes me a little fidgety. <laughs> uh, collars and belt guide wheels, pulleys and idlers. Then, oh boy, big old stack of parts. Wow, that's a lot of parts. Power brick. As far as I know, the bed only goes up to 50. So this is a PLA, PETG, flex machine only. Assuming the extruder assembly can handle flex, which I believe is right here. That's interesting. Huh. 
I wonder what the second hole is for. So this is the feeder assembly. It's all built together. You can see the gear inside there. And the filament goes through one of these holes. That's interesting. It's all ABS molded. So this is not... I mean, this is definitely not junk. I mean, there's a lot of money in injection molds here. So it's going to be interesting to see how well this works. This might take me a week to build. I mean, I don't know how much time I have today. How long it's going to take to get through it. There's a lot to do on this. Because it's it's a genuine kit. Nothing is pre-assembled here. So you got all the screws and stuff. Bags and bags and bags of screws. And brackets. Belts. More brackets. All injection molded. Full size SD card. 4 gigs. Looks like a Kingston. Yeah, it even comes with a pair of scissors. That's... Not sure why. What is this? Oh, there's more here. Oh, there's the heat bed. Okay. Sheathing for the wiring, metal bracket. I hope that's not the carriage plate. Uh, that's a bit flexible for a carriage plate, but that looks like the carriage plate. I am not pleased by that. I mean, it's only a 220 by 220, and it's not bad stiffness, but I can flex that with my hands. So we will see how well that holds that level. But yeah, I guess I'm going to have to dig out the SD card. And there is a reader in here. And some wrenches. There's the SD card, SD card reader. This will be interesting. It looks like a filament sensor. If I had to guess, I'd say that's a filament sensor. And it does have, apparently it has automatic bed leveling as well. Which I believe is this little bit right here. Now it says you're supposed to remove the foam. I'm guessing they mean remove the center foam. That's interesting. The Z-axis sensor. This is some kind of sensor. Oh, isn't that interesting? It will be interesting to see how that works. Huh. And it is GPL compliant. One of the first things I asked, I've got a, a very fast response from the manufacturer. And they provided the source code for the printer, a link for the source code, so that is available on my site. So you don't have to bug them for that. You can just download it. So this has sensor-based bed leveling and um, filament run-up sensor. And it's all injection molded. I mean, it's, they actually, it looks like they actually put some work into this. So this will be interesting. And this is going to be a long video. Because <laughs> this might take me a couple of days of recording to do all this. So this will be interesting. Stage one of the build is to take the build plate and using two M36s to attach the belt clip and M312s to each to attach the linear bearings to the build plate. And this is where the smooth rods will go through and the belt will go through and your heat bed and glass plate will attach to this. On to the next step. Next step is to prepare the acrylic pieces. So this is the one piece. Use the 14 millimeter and the 4 millimeter nylon spacers and the uh, 3 millimeter lock nuts to attach the switch. The one picture has the switch facing this way, but that's not correct. The next drawing has it the correct way. It should look like that. So this will be on the left. Bottom two get the hammer nuts. Same with the front face. Bottom two get the hammer nuts. Next, we're going to install the Y motion system. Alrighty, I've partially finished building the base and Y-axis of the printer. Each of these ABS parts, which are all identical, uh, one gets the bracket for the motor, one gets the bracket for the pulley. You assemble the pulley. The pulley's plastic. It's two pieces that assemble together to make the pulley. I don't know if I like that or not, but it works. It's got bearings inside. Smooth rods, the Y carriage plate, 
Um, one thing I don't, I'm not thrilled about, the ABS part, bolts to the aluminum rail. So you have this beautiful aluminum rail, and the entire rigidity is dependent upon the interconnectedness of the rest of these parts, instead of being absolutely rigid like you would get with four aluminum rails. I would rather they used aluminum rails all around. So we'll see. There's This is all ABS bolted. The feet and this bolt go into hammer nuts, which attach to the aluminum extrusion. But then, of course, this pulls everything tight, which holds your frame together. I do have to give them credit. This is stiff. I mean, I do not see any flexing on this. I mean, it appears to work. So I'm going to trust it and continue on with the assembly. Y carriage is done. The acrylic plates are added to the top. These two are hammer nuts. And these two on the front here go straight through to a capture nut on the other side. It's important to make sure that these pieces go on the right end and that this opening faces the X motor because this plate here, the Y carriage plate, is what presses the end stop switch there. This is still too tight for my liking, so I gotta work on this. I don't like how tight it is. So we will work on that, but otherwise the carriage plate is done and this is I gotta give him credit, this is surprisingly stiff. I mean, more than stiff enough to do the job. So, we shall see how it holds up. And next is to build the X motion system. Alright, X motion sim system is assembled. Do check your diagrams in the PDF file to make sure you have it right because direction is important. Short rod, long rod, bearings, GT2, pulleys, your X motor, and your course, your slide. And it looks like just the belt holds it in. Nothing actually holds them in. That's interesting. So now we, it looks like we're going to be building the gantry now. The vertical rails that this will mount to. Alrighty, so next up is to build the um, Z-stepper. This limit switch is a real pain in the butt to get on there. Because the screws are just barely long enough to grab it. What I did was I put the nut inside of the capture port here. And then I put the skinny wrench underneath of it so I could push the nut up and then feed the bolt in. Um, that's all assembled. The one with the Z motor gets the glass fiber um, board. And the opposite, I'm guessing, um, just the, the mirror portion that holds just the bearing gets the acrylic. Then you pre-build these with the countersunk and hammer nuts. And this is the first part of this build, which I am not happy about. <clears throat> these are your verticals. These verticals attach to the um, base of the printer. And they are held in place by this. And that is... I'm not a happy camper about that. So the only thing that's going to hold these verticals in place are these ABS parts. They're not even metal. Like the T-brackets on the CR-10. They're plastic. Um, there are two holes here. And those are too wide. These should be threaded. And they're not. So I may later come through and thread these and drill them. And put them on there in a way that I like better. But we'll see. Okay. So gantries are installed. And they are not bolted to the bottom. They are held on by these caps. Now these caps are molded. There's actually grooves in the middle and on the outside. So it actually kind of wraps around and molds to the frame. And there's one on each side. So there's two on each side here. It's um, basically they're using an integrated structure. Instead of making it bulletproof, just bolt together strongly like a CR-10, they're integrated, mul integrating multiple pieces together that when they all bolt together, they become strong. And it is pretty strong. I'm impressed. There, there is no flex worth worrying about here. Now, in here, there's a plate up top here. You have your smooth rods, which insert into these two plates. You have a bearing um, pulley here and a pulley here with a tensioner here in the middle. This unit here slides back and forth to tension the belt. And um, so it's three points here. So if you need to adjust your X level, just loosen this pulley so that you can grab the belt and slide it, which will turn this one without turning this one until you get it level, and then you lock them together and you're good. Now, because the two Z rods are connected by a belt, your X cannot get out of level because their two are now mechanically connected. 
that's pretty good. I mean, it does, it does work. So we shall see. I am continuing on. Um, what else here? I got a plate on the front, a plate on top, plus the ABS plate, and they are the four points come together and join here. So it is surprisingly strong and durable. Um, don't forget to install your belt first because it is a closed loop belt with a fixed length. So once you put this plate on, you can't put the belt on. You have to take the plate back off to get the belt on. But I'm impressed. I mean, this is a surprisingly rigid structure. I mean, I don't see any give or flex that worries me. I mean, I'm impressed. They did a halfway decent job designing this printer. I have high hopes. Well, I actually did it one day. I got it going. It's working. Um, I had a problem with some of the end stops, but it turns out I had to reverse two of the motors. They were going backwards, so I just pulled the wires and reversed them. But I think I'd actually have the X and Y motors plugged in backwards, so I have to double check that for now. It just thinks that's X and that's Y. Uh, but it's really not bad. I mean, it's really not bad at all. I'm very impressed. Um, the hybrid construction is pretty cool. And, and oddly enough, it looks good. Except for this. So. <laughs> I gotta finish, I got this all neat. So I'll put some kind of wrap around it so this the, the primary pigtail is all nice and neat, but I gotta make this all neat. I think I'm gonna G-Max style it and mount this right on here like this. Make a 3D print a mount, hook that little bugger right there like that. Um, not bad, heats up quick, didn't give me any problems otherwise, no spool holder. What is with them not including a spool holder? They're going to have to be punished for that, so I'm going to make one of mine for it. So I'm just going to take one of these and I'm going to mount it right here, right there in the middle. That'll be just fine, because this is a um, direct drive, so filament straight down in. I might even be able to reuse that bolt right there to actually put the the holder right there yeah that'll work nice so not bad i want to give you guys a further update as i go i will make some prints on it we will look at those prints and see how good it is i mean you get this on amazon for 225 dollars and it's it's not bad uh, i'm impressed so stay tuned for more for this you know it's my first kit my first box of parts build the printer kit so pretty cool